Hi guys, my name is Bill, and in this video I want to show you how to troubleshoot the burner switches and the burners on a smooth top stove. Alright, so what we have here is a typical Whirlpool smooth top range. And basically what we're going to check are the switches and the top burners. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. And let's get started. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is unplug the range from the wall. Get access to the back of the machine. Now, I shouldn't have to tell you how to take the back off the stove. It's just a bunch of Phillips head screws on a big panel. The panel is sharp, so you want to be careful, of course. And what we're going to get to is the back of the switches. Now, the back of the switches on smooth top stoves and the coil burner stoves are basically all the same. And I'll go over these real quick. Most of them have red and black wires labeled L1 and L2 and they're daisy chained between all the burners, all the burner switches here, in and out. And that's your power going through the switch and then off of the switch you have your H1s and your H2. Those are your hot wires going to the burner itself. And then you have usually one more wire which is labeled like this one here is labeled P2 and just think of it as a pilot light that's the way I look at it and it goes to the indicator light on the other side here basically saying you've turned the switch to the on position it's letting you know that it's on and that's what the the five wires generally do on the back of a switch okay so the first step in the troubleshooting process basically is you have a burner that when you turn the switch on it doesn't light or doesn't turn on so now we need to figure out is it the switch or is it the burner so with the range still disconnected from, there's no power we're going to test continuity to the burner itself so back to the H1 and the H2 wires so you're going to take one of these and unplug it and we're going to try to measure and see if we have resistance going through one wire down through the burner coil and then back up to the switch now on a let's see here on a smaller burner like this one here it might be like a 15 or an 1800 watt burner you probably get like 42 ohms 40 40 something generally the bigger the burner like this one probably like a 2000 or 2500 watt I'm not sure you're going to get in the neighborhood of 20 ohms so as long as you get some sort of reading like that, you know that the burner's good. If you get no continuity, then you know the burner's bad and you don't have to check the switch. At least you shouldn't have to check the switch. You know the burner's the problem. So this here will quickly determine whether your problem is with the burner or the switch. So let me go ahead and test that and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so here we are. I got my alligator clip clipped to the H1. I don't know if you can read that there. The H2 is still on the burner switch. Now right here is the reading without the lead connected. So basically we're gonna to touch it on the other lead here. Reading through the burner at about 42 ohms. Now this burn, it's a good burner. I know this because the stove works perfectly fine. Now if you get this reading, when you have your meter on both those wires, you have a bad burner. Okay, so for the next test, to test the switch out without power to the stove, of course, you're going to remove the L1 and the L2 wires from the switch. Now I've went ahead and used my alligator clip to connect onto L1. Now we're going to use our other terminal. Now we're still on ohms here. There's our zero reading because we're not connected to anything. But we're going to test ohms across L1 and L2. Now this should read through the burner when the, when the switch is turned on in any position. So I'm going to reach around and turn the burner switch on and test between L1 and L2 and test resistance. And I'm reading 42 ohms. So I'm reading through the burner when the switch is turned on. So the switch is good. If you do the same test and you don't get the reading 
but you got an ohm reading on H1 and H2, but you didn't test them through L1 and L2, you know the switch is bad. So basically there you have it. It's real simple, it's real easy to test whether it's the switch or the burner. Okay, so let's say you did your test and you found out you have a bad switch. Now, how you take the switch out, basically there's no screws back here to remove it. You have to come around to the front. You just want to grab a hold of the knob, pull it off, and you're going to see a couple screws. Take those screws out, and the switch is going to fall, fall through, and then you can replace it. Basically, you're just going to match up the wires. That's pretty, pretty cut and dry. That's really hard to mess up. This, as long as you pay attention to when you put the new switch on, that it's in the same orientation as all the other switches. You don't want to put it in upside down. You can, you, can, you can do that. So to avoid doing that, match it up with the other switches. All right, so let's say you tested your switch and your switch was fine, but you didn't get a resistance reading on your burner, so you gotta replace the burner on one of these. Now I'm just gonna tell you right from the beginning, it is a royal pain in the butt to change one of these burners. I mean, it can be done, and if you've done it enough times, it, it becomes a little bit easier, like with anything, but if it's the first time you've ever taken one of these apart, I highly suggest that you have somebody with you to help you and you have about an hour or more of time to, to spend on taking this apart. Now what I'm going to do is show you, I'm going to kind of tell you real quick and then I'm going to set the camera up and I'm going to let you watch me struggle to get one of the burners out of here or at least gain access to where you can replace the burner. Normally on any smooth top stove you want to open up the door and underneath there's going to be couple screws under the front here one on one side one on the other side that's gonna let the top come loose then you want to lift it up they never give you enough wire occasionally you'll have a stove that has a plug where you can unplug the whole top and remove it from the stove which makes it awesome most of them are, are not that simple so it's, it's gonna be a, a pain in the butt you want to have somebody with you to help you hold the top up while you work on it and you want to have some time so you're not rushed. You don't want to break the top. If it's available for your stove, you know, it's going to cost you 300 bucks. That's if it's still available, if you have an older stove. You break the top, you know, it's a big expense. I mean, they're pretty durable, but you still, you still want to be careful not to set any tools on there or drop it. So you definitely want to have somebody with you to help you. Okay, so what I've done was taken the two Phillips head screws to hold the front of this down. And that's going to basically let you pull this forward and lift it up. And then once you do that, you're going to realize that you don't have enough wires. And it looks like a pain in the ass to work on. And it is, believe me. So the fir first thing you want to do is once you've determined which burner was bad, let's say it's this burner. Before you... Before you you know take anything apart maybe take a picture of the wiring or something like that write down the colors and you know where they go so when you take this apart and you put it back together you put the wires in the right place they're all the same you know basically a1 a2 b1 b2 or 2b or something like that they're all they're all the same so if you, if you screw up you can look at another burner and see, you know, where the black wire goes or the wire that runs up to your hot surface indicators and stuff. You, you'll be able to figure it out. Highly suggest take a picture of it or write it down. So let's say this burner here was bad, the front one. That's the, you're only going to take the wires off that burner. Now this brace right here is what holds the burners up against the glass. So. Some of them have a screw on the front to hold this brace, some of them are in the back. Depending on where it is, you know, you're going to lay this down, take that screw out, and then lift the top up to the side so you got your burners laying there. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the screw out of this one and lift it up so you can see how much room you're going to have with the burners.
And basically, there you go. Now I'm going to move the camera off and show you. Alright, so here's what the burners look like up close. Basically, there's a temperature probe in there. And that tells you... Well, that tells the hot surface indicator when to come on. And it also tells if your burner's too hot. There's two limiters in there. You know, one to make sure it doesn't get too hot overall. And the other one just tells it when it's hot enough that you can't touch the top. And then your surface indicator light comes on. So that's basically what that probe right there does. It really doesn't have anything to do with the temperature of the top while you're cooking. That's all controlled up here in the burners. So once you get all the wires off of the bad burner, these just sit on top of that brace. So you want to be careful with the top of these burners, they're real brittle. Basically you lift this up and it comes right out. Now there's little brackets with the little prong things that are sticking down that go into the brace are in a, are in a particular number. You're going to see a bunch of numbers around the bottom of that burner. So when you get the new burner, you want to put those little springs to hold it against the, the brace there in the same numbers. That way your burner doesn't you know, light up off to the side of the ring where the burner's supposed to be. But that's, that's pretty common sense right there. Once you take that one apart and you get your new burner, you'll be able to figure that out. So that kind of sets in. It just sits there. And that's all that holds that burner on. All right, so what we got here is the wiring diagram for this particular stove. I'm just going to go over it real quick. That way, any of you guys who want to look at it and don't have it with your stove can see a typical wiring diagram for a burner. Like I was showing you earlier, here's your L1 and L2 coming into the switch, your H1 and your H2 coming out of the switch. Here's the two limiters that are on the burner itself, one for the hot surface indicator light. Once that gets warm enough it'll close. Send power down to your light for this little guy. And this one here that's normally closed when the burner gets too hot basically shuts the burner off so it doesn't reach over a certain temperature and melt the glass. I don't know what it does if it gets too hot. If you don't have something on there to absorb some heat I'm sure it would get too hot. But if you have a pan on there, that's probably not an issue. So that's what we're looking at here. And then here is the element itself. I think what's it, 1800 watt, medium size. The two small are 1200 watts. And the big burner is a 2500 watt burner. So here's the wiring diagram. Okay guys, I wanna thank you for watching my video. I hope it helps you guys out. I know repairing these can be expensive, so you know, hopefully this will help you guys save some money. That's ultimately my goal when I make these videos for you because I know the bill that you would have for me to come out to replace this burner, you're probably looking at a hundred or more dollars for the burner, plus more than that in labor. So you know you're 250 by the time I'm out the door, if not 300, just to replace the burner when you get it yourself on either you know, like eBay or Amazon or, or another site on the internet where they sell them pretty cheap. And with a little bit of guidance, you can replace it yourself. So I hope this helps you out and you can subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching.